Today, I am finally taking a look at AMD's Ryzen 5 8400F, a CPU released back in April of last year, though as an OEM only part, which is why I skipped over it, or at least I have until now, because for a little while now, you have been able to purchase them online at places like AliExpress, and they are very cheap. So I guess, is the 8400F worth buying is the question we're asking today, and is it as fast as the name might have you believe? Also, along with the 8400F, I've purchased the 7400F, a Chinese focus version of the 7500F. So that is to say, it's going to be a worse version because China always seems to be an exclusive dumping ground for such parts, especially from AMD. So the 8400F and 7400F will be compared for gaming with the 7500F, 7600, 7600X, and even the 9600X. But before we get to that, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Gigabyte and their Aorus Radeon RX 9070 XT Elite, one of the most feature-packed 9070 XTs on the market, and arguably the best looking, thanks to the RGB halo design, a triple ring lighting effect that provides unique visuals. But the Aorus Elite isn't just a flashy looking graphics card, it packs a massive vapor chamber cooler that allows it to sustain the highest core clocks of any 9070 XT that we've tested and we've tested pretty much all of them. This resulted in some of the best out-of-the-box performance, and combine that with the strong feature set, which includes dual BIOS support, massive aluminium backplate with pass-through area, dual HDMI outputs, ARGB lighting, a GPU support that includes a wide range of adjustment, and you have a real winner, which is why we recommend checking out Gigabyte's Aorus Radeon RX 9070 XT Elite via the link in the video description. Okay, so what is the Ryzen 5 8400F? Because really, at face value, it does sound very much like something that would be newer than, say, the 7600X or any of the 7000 series parts. And by newer, I mean better. So not just more recently released, but also a technically better product. But unfortunately, that is not the case at all. Rather, AMD likes to do this weird thing where they release an entire product series using a specific architecture, for example, a Zen 4, that was the Ryzen 7000 series. But then about a year later, they announce a new series, so a, a new series. Uh, and in this example, it was the Ryzen 8000 series. But although it's like it sounds like this brand new thing, 7000, 8000, that's a whole new generation. But really, the Ryzen 8000 series, it's nothing new in terms of the architecture. So it's not Zen 5 or anything like that. It still is Zen 4. It is, however, entirely new silicon designed to incorporate a more powerful iGPU, but you are still getting the same Zen 4 cores, just with less L3 cache, while the PCI Express support has also been downgraded, both in version and lane count. So on the CPU side of things, the Ryzen 8000 series is actually a considerable downgrade when compared to the older 7000 series, which I think most will agree is very misleading at best. AMD initially led with the Ryzen 7 8700G and Ryzen 5 8600G. Now the 8700G packs 8 cores with 16 threads, while the 8600G is a 6 core 12 thread version. The 8700G also features 12 CUs, while the 8600G gets 8 CUs for the integrated RDNA 3 graphics. Now, as noted earlier, about six months ago, AMD quietly pushed out the 8400F as an OEM only part. And in short, this is an 8600G, but without the iGPU. So it is missing what is arguably the entire point of the 8600G, that being the 8CU iGPU. They also released the 8700F at the same time, which, as you probably guessed, is an 8700G, but again without the iGPU. So despite sounding like a newer, faster model, the 8400F is actually inferior to the 7400F in every possible way. Both will clock up to 4.7GHz by default, but the 7400F packs twice as much L3 cache with 32MB, and it also supports PCI Express 5.0, with a total of 28 lanes, whereas the 8400F is limited to PCIe 4.0 with just 20 lanes, and both models have to reserve four of those lanes for connecting with the motherboard's chipset, leaving the 8400F with just 16 usable lanes. Now, the 8400F was meant to be an OEM-only product, and this is often how AMD goes about pushing out their, uh, let's say, less consumer-friendly products, whether that be dodgily named products or questionable configurations. But also, as is often the case, these products eventually find their way into retail channels, 
and for many months now it has been possible to purchase the 8400F from online retailers such as AliExpress, and that's exactly how I got mine, for just $165 delivered. Oh, and that's $165 Australian dollars. For context, the 7400F, that cost me $190, the 7500F, $230, and then we typically pay around $290 for the 7600 and 7600X, and then $330 for the 9600X. The 7400F, 7500F, 76 and 7600X are all the exact same silicon, they just represent different levels of binning. Though they are all unlocked, so technically you could overclock a 7400F to reach 7600X light performance, though that does depend entirely on how lucky you get with silicon quality, as is always the case with any overclocking or undervolting. So the question is, for gamers on a budget, which one of these AM5 processors should you buy? And to find out, I'm comparing all of them in a dozen games using the same motherboard and memory configuration, so let's dive into the data. Starting with Marvel Rivals, we see that the 9600X is good for 188 FPS on average when using the medium settings at 1080p. This made it just 5% faster than the 7600X, 8% faster than the 7600, 11% faster than the 7500F, 17% faster than the 7400F, and then a massive 34% faster than the 8400F. That margin is reduced to 27% with the ultra settings, and here most of the 6-core 7000 series parts delivered similar results. The 9600X, for example, was just 15% faster than the 7400F. So really, we're only seeing a noticeable drop-off in performance here with the 8400F. The margins seen in Rainbow Six Siege are a bit more extreme. Here the 8400F is much slower than the fully-fledged 32MB L3 cache parts, though performance overall was still excellent, allowing for well over 200 FPS at all times. Still, the 7400F was a little over 30% faster when using either the medium or ultra settings. This is also a good title for Zen 5, as the 9600X is 17% faster than the 7600X when using the medium settings, or 11% when using Ultra Plus. The 7600X, 7600, and 7500F are all tightly grouped, while the 7400F was around 5-6% slower than the 7500F. Assassin's Creed Shadows is a heavily GPU limited title that doesn't ask too much of your CPU, so if you have a fairly modern CPU, the bottleneck is most likely going to be with your GPU, as we see here, even when using an RTX 5090. As a result, all six CPUs delivered very similar performance. Next up, we have Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, and while more CPU demanding than Assassin's Creed Shadows, these modern 6-core 12-thread CPUs are still more than up to the task. Even when using the medium preset, the 9600X was just 12% faster than the 7400F, and just 7% faster than the 7500F. And those margins are almost entirely eliminated when using the very high preset. Now, the 8400F does fall off the pace a little, but even so, performance was pretty solid, despite the 7400F being 15% faster. Moving on to Cyberpunk 2077, here we have some mixed and probably unexpected results. Using the medium preset, the 9600X was only able to roughly match the 7600, coming in slightly slower than the 7600X. Meanwhile, the 7600X was just 6% faster than the 7500F, which makes sense, and then 10% faster than the 7400F. The 8400F did surprisingly well here, with 145 FPS on average, though that did make the 7600X almost 20% faster. Then as we switch to the more demanding ray tracing preset, the game quickly becomes GPU limited, even with the RTX 5090. So although these settings do technically increase CPU load, the CPUs tested here are generally fast enough to the point where we discover the GPU limit first. Now Space Marine 2 is a very CPU demanding game, but interestingly in our testing, the average frame rate for the 7400F, 7500F, 7600 and 7600X was all the same, with just a minor variant seen when looking at the 1% lows. The 9600X saw up to a 6% gain thanks to the Zen 5 improvements, while the 8400F was noticeably slower due to its much smaller L3 cache. For example, when using the medium quality preset, the 7400F produced 16% greater 1% lows with a 14% greater average frame rate. The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered is another game where from the 7400F through to the 9600X we saw very similar performance. 
The 9600X, for example, was just 6 to 8% faster than the 7400F, depending on quality settings, while the 7400F was 15% faster than the 8400F. Spider-Man 2 is another game I've tested with ray tracing enabled, but before we focus on that, let's go over the medium preset data. And this is another example where Zen 5 does perform better than Zen 4, and as a result the 9600X is up to 6% faster than the 7600X. And then we see that the 7600X was just 5% faster than the 7500F, so the 6-core 12-thread 7000 series processors are all much the same in this title. Then we have the 8400F which didn't perform too badly, as the 7400F was just 9% faster when using the medium settings, and then 11% faster using the ray tracing ultimate settings, though here we do see a 25% increase to the 1% lows, so the 8400F did struggle a little bit there. Mafia, the old country, was pretty rough on the 8400F, most notably to the 1% lows, where the 7400F was seen to be 41% faster when using the medium preset, and then 21% faster using the ultra settings. The 32 megabyte L3 cache parts, on the other hand, were all much the same, and even when using the medium preset, the 9600X was just 10% faster than the 7400F. ACC is a very cache sensitive title, so I'm not surprised to see the 8400F really lagging behind here, while the Zen 5 based 9600X does very well, outperforming the 7600X by an 8% margin using the medium preset, and then 12% when using the more CPU demanding Epic settings. Then we see that the 7600X is 13 to 15% faster than the 7400F, while the 7400F was a massive 25% faster than the 8400F, and this is seen when using the medium preset, and then 14% faster with the epic settings. Despite being quite a demanding title, the Baldur's Gate 3 results are highly competitive, though the 9600X does pull ahead using the medium preset, beating the 7600X by an 11% margin. That aside though, the 7600X was just 9% faster than the 8400F, though that margin grew to 16% when using the Ultra settings. Last up we have Counter-Strike 2, and here we're using a Pro Replay, and this is another example where the 9600X is quite a bit faster, at least by Zen 5 standards, beating the 9600X by a 16% margin with the medium preset, and then 8% when using the very high preset. The 7400F was also 19-22% to faster than the 8400F, so a big performance advantage there for the 32 megabyte model. Now here's a look at the 12 game average data, and starting from the top we see that depending on the quality settings used, the 9600X can be up to 6% faster than the 7600X, and this is seen when using the medium settings, but then just 3% faster on average with the very high settings. Meanwhile the 7600X was a mere 2-3% to faster than the 7600, while the 7600 was just 2% faster than the 7500F. The 7500F was 3-4% to faster than the 7400F, and then finally, the 7400F was 12-14% to faster than the 8400F. So, the CPU that you might actually expect to be the second fastest, based on the name, is actually by far the slowest. So, good job there, AMD. Alright, so here's a quick look at the cost per frame data, though be aware, these parts aren't all readily available in the US. For example, the 7400F and 7500F often have to be brought in from China, and therefore additional taxes will probably be applied. But tariffs and whatnot aside, this is what each model should cost. Based on this pricing data, the 8400F is offering budget gamers the most value, so despite the dodgy naming, it is quite a good offering, at least at the current pricing, and Again, we're assuming that it can be had for 24% less than the 7400F and 7500F. The 7600, 7600X, and 9600X are all very similar in terms of value, so that being the case, you would just get the newer Zen 5 9600X. Now, based on the Australian pricing, and be aware, Australians will have to buy the 8400F, 7400F, and 7500F from AliExpress, just as I did, but when doing so, the 7400F is the best value option. And although the 8400F is better value than the 7500F, I would actually pay a premium to secure the 7500F and get the full 32 megabyte L3 cache. But there is no denying that at these prices, the 8400F is at the very least good value. Before wrapping things up, here's a look at the shader compilation performance, and I've included the 9800X 3D just for reference, since I have the data. For building shaders in Marvel Rivals, the 9600X and 7600X performed very similarly. 
and this meant that the 7400F was just 11% slower than the 7600X, while the 8400F was 17% slower. When it comes to shader compilation performance in The Last of Us Part 1, the 9600X was slightly faster than the 7600X, reducing the render time by just 3%. The 7400F took a bit longer than the 7500F, and overall was around 15% slower than the 7600X, which is roughly in line with the clock speed difference. Then we have the 8400F, which was much slower than the 7600X, taking 34% longer to complete this task. Finally, we have the Stalker 2 shader compilation times, and the margins here are similar to what we've seen in the other two games tested. The 7400F, for example, is 13% slower than the 9600X, and 11% slower than the 7600X, while the 8400F is quite a bit slower, 24% slower in this example. So there you have it. As much as I disapprove of the naming that AMD went with for the 8400F, and the entire 8000 series for that matter, at $165 Australian, delivered to your door, it's actually a very reasonable offering in terms of value, and a very cost-effective way of jumping on the AM5 platform. And that's really not something I could have said about the 8600G when it was first released for 380 Australian dollars, and even to this day, it still costs 300 dollars. It is a very weak offering at that price. All of that said, I think I'd rather spend a little bit more to get the 7400F. Here in Australia, it's a mere 15% premium, and for that, you get twice the L3 cache and much better PCIe support. So for me, the 7400F is a no-brainer. This is what budget gamers should be on the lookout for. Of course, the 7500F is also a viable option. And then beyond that, we arrive at the familiar Ryzen 5 7600. And at that point with current pricing, you might as well just skip that part along with its bigger brother and just get the newer 9600X. But keep in mind, the 9600X costs 74% more than the 7400F. And in our testing was on average just 15% faster. That's of course when looking at mostly heavily CPU limited gaming, so in reality that margin will often be even less. The 7500F has been the best value AM5 processor for years now, so nothing's really changed there, you just have like a second, slightly better value option to choose from, that is of course assuming that you can buy from retailers such as AliExpress, so that's good news. 7400F does look to be the new king of value on AM5, or the 7500F, but yeah, two good options there, um, and probably skip over the 8400F in my opinion, but of course, I'm very keen to hear from you guys. What do you make of the 8400F, its name, the performance, uh, the APU that's not an APU, uh, all, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, let me know below in the comment section. I'll be sure to read over all of that because it'll help, um, I don't know, navigate this content in the future. But that is going to do it for this video. So if you liked it, you know what to do. You can subscribe for more content. I have purchased the Ryzen 5 9600. So the non-X version. So I guess we can make some content about that soon. I also got that from AliExpress. Uh, yeah, join button, Patreon, signing up to either one of those things will give you access to uh, exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, Q&A stuff, and behind the scenes content. So check that out if you're interested. If not, perfectly fine. And of course, I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.